The Battle of Epsilon II pitted the ECV-197 Orville of the Planetary Union against a nondescript Krill destroyer. The prelude to the battle involved the Orville responding to a request for more supplies from the station of Epsilon II. The maiden voyage of the Orville, Admiral Halsey lamented that his orders lacked any real excitement, though Captain Ed Mercer assured him that it would be fine. Upon arriving to Epsilon II, Captain Mercer was quickly apprised that the request for aid had been a ruse. The scientists of Epsilon II had discovered technology that would allow them to age any object rapidly within a beam of the device they had created. Captain Mercer and his exo Kelly Grayson, not realizing what they were looking at, seemed relieved that the impending war with the bananas that had weighed heavily on the planetary union would be avoided. Probably really any war with a vegetation-like species was now a trouble of the past. As always, peace through force. The scientists quickly corrected the captain, noting that the ray could be used to help feed entire colonies and civilizations, as crops could be prepared within minutes and not have to wait months. Security officer Alara Katan, best security chief ever, by the by, noted that the device could also be used as a weapon, aging entire armies in the blink of an eye. The scientists of Epsilon II agreed, stating that this was why they had concocted the ruse the entire time. Seeing how important this was, Captain Mercer attempted to contact the Orville, though unfortunately the scientists of Epsilon II would be betrayed by a lab technician named Derek. Captain Mercer, noting how the man to turn on them would be, of course, named Derek, relented and put down his communication device, cutting off all access to the Orville. In space, a Krill destroyer would enter into the system and begin launching shuttles, which were, of course, headed for Epsilon II. Derek, being controlled by the evilness of his name, would force Captain Mercer to contact the Orville, which Captain Mercer had left in the command of Lieutenant Commander Bordas. He would be told to advise Lieutenant Commander Bordas that everything was okay. Captain Mercer and Exo Grayson would lie to the Orville, telling them that the Krill came in peace and that they were here for a pizza party, noting that the September birthdays were a big deal for Epsilon II. Most of the bridge crew of the Orville would be excited and want to go to the pizza party, though Bordis would remain skeptical. Well, this is the weirdest battle breakdown I've ever done. In a diligent act of heroism, Lieutenant Alara Katan would dislodge a very heavy piece of scaffolding and throw it at Derek. Derek given the superpowers of his evil name, would somehow survive this attack, even though the attack would kill most people. Especially given how strong Alara Katan is, and that it's a huge chunk of scaffolding, and that it hit him directly in the head. With Derek incapacitated, Captain Mercer would advise the Orville of the real mission of the Krill. Lieutenant Commander Bordas would send a warning to the Krill warship, but the Krill warship would power its weapons, and the space battle would ensue. Now let's break down the differences in the ships. Don't worry, this isn't Star Trek. They don't explain nearly anything, so it'll be quick. But if you don't want a breakdown, go to the timestamp below to skip it. But, come on. Come on! The USS Orville was a mid-size exploratory vessel. Not meant for combat, the armaments of the ship were light. It sported at least two forward energy pulse weapons, powerful enough to cause damage to ships that were larger than it was, but still not enough to take out most warships. The Orville also has plasma torpedoes, at least six tubes on strategic parts of the ship, so I guess we can call it an Acura class, eh? The plasma torpedoes were made of, I don't know, I, I guess something to do with plasma, I guess. I. It doesn't really explain it. For defenses, the Orville would also have a deflector shield which would be able to withstand the onslaught of a Krill destroyer, for a small amount of time at least. The Krill destroyer would boast direct energy weapons that fired green bolts. It also had torpedoes, though they aren't named. And that's it. See? Easy. The battle was initially going very poorly for the Orville. Clearly outmatched, the Orville needed to buy time for the party on the ground to get back to the ship so they could escape. In a daring act of heroism and skill, Lieutenant Gordon Malloy requested Latitude to attempt a maneuver that would keep the Krill at bay. Lieutenant Commander Bordas granted him permission, and Lieutenant Malloy initiated a little-known tactic which was called hugging the donkey. The crew initially skeptical, he was able to hug the donkey, interweaving around the Krill ship and between its engines. The Orville was able to dodge most of the Krill ship's shots. This maneuver, while having the ability to give the crew a bad bout of vertigo, is also difficult that most pilots in the galaxy would not be able to pull it off. During the battle, Lieutenant Malloy would reintroduce his request to be able to wear shorts due to the success of this maneuver, but would sadly be denied. Even though this tactic would prevent most of the shots from connecting, ultimately the Krill would get several shots off of the vessel, destroying two of its three engines. It would, however, buy enough time for the away party to get the device and get back onto the shuttle and begin its return to Oroville. Unfortunately, the shuttle would be damaged and lose all navigational control. 
Lieutenant Malloy would once again have to not only avoid the Krill warship's attacks, but also swing the Orville in a way that it would allow the shuttle to enter into the docking bay. Compared to trying to thread a needle in a hurricane, Lieutenant Malloy would once again be able to pull it off. Captain Mercer and the away team would arrive aboard the Orville safely. After some negotiations and ensuring that the Krill commander's framing on the view screen was appropriate, the captain and XO would trick the Krill into accepting the aging device and would use the device to age a tree while it was on the Krill ship, destroying the Krill destroyer itself. With the trick successful, Captain Mercer would quip to the Krill commander before it was destroyed, Happy Arbor Day. The captain would be one-upped by the XO who would have said, You got wood. And thus would end the space battle of Epsilon II with a planetary union victory. This would not be the last space battle between the Orville and nondescript Krill destroyers. I may just have to do some other breakdowns on this. Stay tuned. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I'm sorry I didn't do a Lorecraft of the Romulans vs. Starfleet, but I didn't feel like I could do it justice. So that will be my Thursday special for next week. Please, guys, don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. And, guys, I'll see you on the next Lore Reloaded.